Today we're going to perform an insulation test on a motor. As you can see the motor's running. We're going to shut the motor off as all insulation tests should be done on a de-energized motor. As you can see here, we can kill it. We're going to validate that we don't have any voltage on it using our non-contact volt alert. And then we're going to furthermore, with this demonstration, we're lucky enough, we can de-energize it. So now we're going to perform our insulation test. We've broken into the, to the motor itself, identifying the different legs of the, the wiring. This motor is designed for two different voltages, 115 or 230. That's why you're going to see more wiring associated with this. We first want to validate that our insulation tester is working correctly. In this situation, we're going to keep the test leads apart, and we're going to run the test. This test is run at 500 volts. As you can see with this meter, we're getting 550 million ohms at 527 volts DC. Now we're going to short the test leads to confirm that the meter is working correctly. In this situation, we should see 0 ohms and 0 to 1 volts. Again, you can see the 0 ohms and the 1 volt. We now know that the, mo the insulation tester is ready to perform. We're going to take and set up As you can see, I've picked two of the legs. Let's run it. This motor is designed, as I said before, at 115 and 230 volt. We're going to run this at 500 volts. It's always recommended that we double the value, the input, of the rated uh, voltage. Each test you want to run for 10 seconds minimum. As you can see here, the insulation rating is 550 million ohms at 527 volts DC. Let's go ahead and do the rest of them. This motor not only has the ability to be changed with its voltage, but also you can change the speed or the, the direction of the rotation. In this case here, we've identified those two test leads. You can see where it's zero ohms. Our voltage is creeping up, but it's still showing that there's a short in that that are touching. We can actually continue and run the test based on this other test leg and perform the test on the other legs again.
And the last one. Now we're going to perform a dielectric absorption test, or a DAR test. This test is performed as a time resistance test. It's independent of equipment size and temperature. This test is going to do a performance of a 1 minute to 30 second ratio test. We'll hit the Pi DAR button twice, which will put it in the DAR mode, and we'll go ahead and run the insulation test. In this situation here, the unit has hit an error. This is actually a good test. When we're doing the ratio of the, of the test, we determine that there is no breakdown in insulation or moisture intrusion. We're going to let the test leads on for a minute while the meter discharges any voltage. We're now going to run a pi test. Pi is the polarization index test. This is another method for determining the condition of the insulation. It is particularly value in uncovering moisture and oil ingress that have a flattening effect on the curve. Let's perform this test. This test is a 10 minute to 1 minute ratio test. Again, you can see that this motor is in good condition. A low polarization index, typically you would display a 1.5 or lower, would indicate excessive moisture or contamination. In this case, we have a good motor with good insulation and no moisture intrusion. Again, I'm going to let the test leads on here long enough to let the meter discharge any voltage that is on the line. 